I am Dr. Sunil Dashipali. I am orthopedic surgeon at Yashoda Hospital, Somaji Guda. Um, the reason I am here today is um, mainly to discuss as to what is happening. Either now or later, one of us or our relatives might need some procedure or some treatment. And you always wonder, are we getting the right thing? And you always feel, probably should I go for a second opinion? So unless you are aware as to what is happening now in the medical world as well, so you won't know whether the doctor who is treating you or your relative is doing the right thing. So that's why I'm here. I um, want to talk to you about a few things about orthopedics, which is uh, dealing with the bones. That's what I do. I fix the bones. The gentleman you hear, as you see here, is the father of orthopedics. So why do we have this slide? So I'll go to the next one and then again flip back again. So that's me operating there in the mask. So again, if you compare these two theatres, it's the same operation theatre. But see, there is a hell of a lot of difference. So you see here, on one hand side, you see a tent wherein the surgeons are inside. That's because those days we didn't, much, we didn't have much of antibiotics. So we have to control infection, that's the only way. And you see the gentleman outside is the one who is cooking something. That is anesthesia. Those days we just had ether. In orthopedics, we have two areas. One is called trauma, which is called hot orthopedics. The other one is elective. That, that is, you can choose when you can have that surgery. That's called cold orthopedics. Whereas if you come to hot or trauma, we say it should be done as soon as possible. So you don't have much time to think about it. In trauma, we have lots of plates and screws. The advancement is more of titanium into that and more flexible methods. Now coming to the cold orthopedics, I have divided it into the joints or bones wise starting from the neck, so it's easy for you to understand. So starting the topmost joint after the neck is? Shoulder. Yes, fantastic. So let's see what is new in shoulder. Can you all see the dots on the shoulder? Yes? So what I've done is called arthroscopy. It's a keyhole surgery wherein instead of making a big cut, we are just making small cuts, putting a camera inside. And I get to see what's happening inside. Can you see the camera there? And that's my vision there. I can see the inside. So I can see everything, each and every corner, make sure what is happening and then treat accordingly. If you see this, that's a five millimeter probe that I'm using. That is a condition called frozen shoulder wherein you must have seen a lot of your grandparents struggling to lift their hand. Majority are diabetics. They can't even comb their head. <clears throat> in earlier days, we used to do what is called manipulation. That is, it's more of a rough technique wherein you just try to break things. You just, you know, push the shoulder and you're not sure if you're going to fracture also. But now we have got this latest technique wherein you can use this, a small 5 millimeter probe, put it inside and turn it around, release all the tried structures, you're done. Similarly, if you see this, like majority of you, young guys or girls, now we are all into this active mode, isn't it? We want to do a lot of adventurous activities, a lot of ball games. You want to participate in sports, athletes, athletics. So you might injure your shoulder joint wherein the ball comes out. What you see on the x-ray is just you have seen that the ball is out and you go to the hospital, they put it back in. You think that's done. It's not. When the ball comes out, it breaks the barriers. So it has broken all the tissues in front. So unless you respect and treat them accordingly, which is rest, for some time this is what is going to happen. As you can see, this is called the liberal tears. Can you see that? Then again, I have to use the keyhole to repair it back. When initially, when I did one, this one, I used to open up the shoulder completely. Now I can do with a small keyhole. Similar this one, a small story. Can you, re can you all read there? What, is, what does it say there? Good. So when I finish my orthopedics, one of my senior consultants, he is a pulmonologist. He came to me running and said, there is a professor from Liverpool and he thinks I have a slap tear. Guess where I was looking? I was looking at his face. So that was my knowledge levels. What is slap? You always look at your face, isn't it? I thought he had a slap. Okay, in spite of finishing my orthopedics, MS orthopedics, that's how the knowledge levels, you know, that's how the orthopedics is evolving. Later when literally I felt ashamed, I had to go back home, read what is this lap tear. But now it's been ages and you can see this become a common word. Again, as you can see, you all know biceps. So they repair the biceps again with the keyhole. 
Now again you must have seen some older people falling on the ground, they can't lift their shoulder. They think they've got paralysis. It's not paralysis, can you all see there on the top, that's the tear. So because there is no connection between the bone and the muscles, they can't lift. But if you ask them to move the elbow and the fingers, they can. So the nerve, that is the electric circulation is there. The only thing is the connection is not there which is the muscle. So if you see this gentleman, as you all see, he can't lift his shoulder. But on the other picture, you see it's almost full. And we achieved this with this small three key keyholes. And coming to arthritis, again, you can see two different pictures. I want all of you to concentrate. So we're going to go something interesting. Now if you see this one, this is called resurfacing, like we do the tarmac resurfacing. If you have a bit of arthritis, I just do the cap, you're done. And this is called total shoulder replacement. Did we all hear about knee replacement? Yes. Good, fantastic. Have we all heard about shoulder replacement? No, yeah. So that is what's new, that's what I do. So concentrate on this one. The next slide is coming up. I want you to compare both. Yeah, you ready? Okay, I'll take, take you back one slide. Good, fantastic. If you all see there, the cap, the cup, yeah? The cup and the ball is like that in this one. Now let's go to the next one. The ball is here and the cup is here. So that is called reverse shoulder orthoplasty. So that is what you guys do, not me. You're all engineers, you guys design and I follow you, isn't it? So it's like a teamwork. So yes, so there is a reason for this, the biomechanics. Because if you see, I have shown you one slide where the older people fall on, that's called the muscle tear. They can't lift. So if there is no connection, if I do a joint replacement, it's going to go off. There's nothing stopping it. Okay. So if I have muscles, I do this one. If I don't have muscles, what I do is I use the hinge. We all understand what is hinge? Yes? Good. So the ball is used and I'm hinging the cup onto that so it doesn't escape off. And we use the rest of the muscles. So this is the beauty, as you see this lady, she's 78 and after fall she had both the shoulders literally not working. She was like this, only feeding herself or just the personal hygiene. Can't lift up to get the hair. Now with that movement, do you all agree at a 78, this is what we want, isn't it? So that's decent enough. Now coming to the elbow, again we do keyhole surgeries to take off small bits and pieces like this. It's mainly to avoid again major surgeries, you must have had fall, a small bit of bone left inside cause a loose body, again we take it off. And uh, we do joint replacements as well, so to get the mobility. The aim in, in your life is to have a decent life where you can do the daily activities without struggling. Coming to the wrist, we try to either repair or we do what is called debridement, that is just take off the tear. And coming to the hip joint, as you can see, a condition wherein you can see the roundness is going, there's a bump. Okay, so that is called impingement. Like in this diagram, it can impinge on anywhere. Impingement is nothing but something is stopping. So what do I do? Use this technique and just clear off the bump so that you don't have to have a big cut again and you're back to your activities. Now coming to hip arthritis, this was a fantastic operation six years ago. There was a South Asia hip resurfacing unit. One of my senior colleagues or friend, he came down from Liverpool where I was trained. We were together. Six years ago, he came down, set up South Asia resurfacing unit. Now, hardly we are doing any of those. The reason being, one of the companies which started it almost 20 years ago was very successful. There was one more famous company tried to copy them without following the rule book and then everything was disaster. So that's when people started thinking, is it wise to do this one when there are so complications? So these are the things that's what you need to be aware. Okay, hip resurfacing is one area. If somebody offers you, you want to be aware. Okay, it is done. It's a good operation provided. It is done by a technique called Birmingham technique. That's the first company. And then again, one more slide I want you to concentrate. What is the difference between these two slides, the pictures there? Can anybody spot? I think I'll announce a gift at the end, don't worry. 
the answer will be quicker. Right, so if you see on the left hand side, you can see something surrounding the ball, the cup, the white stuff, that's called bone cement. That is to put the implants and then hold on to the bone. But if you see there, you can hardly see anything there. That's called uncemented. So we don't use anything to hold. It's a bone that is holding. So this, as you all know, will be done in older people where the bone stock is not as good. And when you come to this one, it's more of the younger population. So this is the important difference in the age. And what is one more important thing? This is called bearings. This is metal on polyethylene. The one on the left, extreme left, metal on metal. And at the bottom, the pink one is ceramic on ceramic. Now, which one has more friction and more wear? That is your knowledge, isn't it? your language. Which one has more friction, you think? Yeah, we are closer, metal on metal, but the wear rate, which one is more prone for wear? Ceramic on ceramic. Okay, let's see who wins. Ceramic on ceramic is very smooth. So the friction, coefficient of friction is very less. So we have very less friction and wear. Whereas the metal on poly, because the poly is a bit softer than the metal. Like Sir said, yes, metal on metal has more friction. And when it comes to wear, because polyethylene is a bit more softer, it tries to wear faster. So where does all these particles go? It's not like you wear and it's not like your car, you know, exhaust that the fumes go out. This has to have a channel. So where, what happens? It's absorbed in your body. And that's what causes what is called loosening, okay? Coming to the knee, we all know there are lots of ligament injuries around. So that's why I'm here. I'm a sports specialist, sports surgeon as well. So this is what we see, meniscal tears. If you see a small bit like that, we chop it off a small bit. It doesn't make much difference. But if I see a big tear like this, I repair. So this is, we are trying to conserve the nature, preserve the nature, because it's there for a reason. If you take off, start taking off everything, you develop what's called arthritis. And the next common thing is ACL. The only reason, bikes. Yes, you slam the brakes suddenly, you twist your bike, your foot is on the ground, you twist, ligaments cut, and when you go to the doctor, they do the x-ray, ah, sab hai, chale ja. No, sab achha nahi hai. MRA karwana hai. And this is what I do. I do what's called hamstrings. And this is after surgery. As you can see, it's a fantastic one, isn't it? Two small holes, and a small hole to take the ligament out. And you're done. Morning we operate, evening you walk, next day you're home. So that's the beauty of having this latest surgery, it's called you know, arthroscopy. And also nowadays we have lots of pro kabaddi, lots of athletics and all. That's the kneecap that's out. So whenever you're trying to bend, you hear a click sound and it comes out. So we can repair that as well, taking the ligament from your own body. Right, so coming to the interesting topic, the knee arthritis. Have you all heard of knee replacements, isn't it? So this is something, three years ago, a bang in the city, like in a mini knee replacement with a small hole. What happened? It was a disaster. 16 cases were operated and 12 failed. Is that a good operation or a bad operation? Yeah. Obviously. But that's 16 guinea pigs. How did they go? Because they didn't do much of research. Whichever doctor you're going to, whichever procedure you're going to do, undergo. Please read about it. We are all educated now. Lots of websites. There is a fantastic website called PubMed. Please refer to that. Make a list of the questions you need to ask the doctor. Go to them and ask the questions. See, you're paying the fee for a reason. You're not going to a charity hospital, are you? So, make a list. You know, have your doubts and make sure you clarify everything. Okay, so coming to the major knee replacement itself, this is what we do. We, tear, you know, we put a cap on the worn out surfaces. So fast tracking is nothing but morning we do the knee replacement, after four hours you're walking and you're out of the hospital in four days. The idea is you do the activities of daily living before you leave the place and nobody's going to hold you. You're just going to the walker on your own, you're going to the washroom and the dining room. That is the whole idea of fast tracking. I just wanted to show you the pictures that were there. The lady walking just four hours after the operation in the theater itself. There was a gentleman who was walking up and down the stairs on the, four, on the fourth day so that he's independent. Okay, so that's the knee replacement, total knee replacement. That's a beauty because we take care of the pain. That's called pain team and we take care of the pain. 
and we also have what is called mini knee replacement or partial knee replacement. Okay, so these are the options. Now, if you see this, the difference between the partial and the total knee replacement, you can see I have done only the part of the knee that is worn out. Why do I do that? As you can see in the clinical picture there, only a bit is worn out, so we can only change whatever is required. And this gentleman, if you see, it's only the kneecap that's worn out. Okay, so I've just changed the kneecap instead of changing the hole. So it's back to, you know, playing football. So you want to do the minimalistic surgery to make it easy. And coming to the ankle, we do ankle arthroscopy again, that is the keyhole surgery. And we do, as you see this one, that is a slide showing the keyhole. And we do the ankle replacement, but in India yet, we have to get that implants. So I performed them when I, whilst I was in the United Kingdom. I'll just update you on the other common areas. I don't know how many of you are driving past the Jubilee Hills or Film Nagar. You'll see a nice band there. Why replace when you can regrow? That is a bit misleading. I mean, the concept is if you have any cartilage injury, we can cover the cartilage. See, you are youngsters, if you leave a small piece of cartilage, I can regrow your cartilage, put it back in. But joint replacement is not only losing cartilage. If you see your older people, they are like this. That is mechanical problem. So if you want to jack it out, how much pressure do you need? So a simple soft tissue you think will do? No. So there comes your biomechanics, okay? The principles of aligning structures and all. So there you need the joint replacement. So don't get bugged by the word, oh, stem cell therapy, it's the new mantra and all. Please read about it. I also do it only for selective patients. Wherever there is an indication, we do that. Otherwise, we try and advise them accordingly.